just go ahead and throw them out there. Um, so we're going we're gonna to talk today about smallmouth bass fishing, mainly uh, early spring, you know, that pre-spawn time when we're out there trying to poke away at them and look for them. Uh, it gets pretty tough some days. It could be feast or famine. Some days it's going to be really easy out there. It's going to be by the numbers. And the days when you really want to be on your game is when it gets tougher out there. Uh, the water temperatures change quickly. The water gets high and muddy on the river. So we're going to talk about pre, uh, powering pre-spawn uh, river smallmouth bass. The second thing I'm going to talk about today is musky fishing. And I'm going to focus a lot on how to locate you know, what I call grade A musky waters. Because, you know, it's what, the fish of 10,000 cats, right? We're going to cut it down to about 1,000 cats, okay, if we can, all right? And we're going to focus on the best water that's out there. Um, just a little bit about myself before I jump into the smallmouth stuff. Um, you guys uh, you guys pretty much know me, but I do kite fishing classes out in uh, the Juniata River, the uh, Susquehanna River. My main focus is smallmouth bass, but we catch walleye, we catch muskie, anything that will be a wire bass lures, we're going we're gonna to go after it. So... Um, the things I'm going to talk about in terms of the, the smallmouth, the pre-spawn smallmouth, is going to be locate, locating early spring smallmouth. That's really critical. You know, you, you can have, you know, I've got 10 baits here, right? And so, if I'm throwing these baits where the fish aren't, I'm not going to catch anything. A lot of times, if you can find a fish, you're going to be able to catch those fish on more than one presentation. So, my focus is always, first, let's find the fish, and then we're going to fine-tune our presentations from there. I'm not saying that, you know, some days... You know, some baits are not going to catch bigger fish. Some days, some of your baits are going to catch more fish. But I want to find those fish first. Then the second thing I'm going to do is talk about early spring smallmouth presentations. That's really critical because, like I said, you've got, you know, the easy clear water, green water, you know, the warming temperatures, and everything's on the rise, and that's pretty easy. But then all of a sudden you get that cold rain, cold front, high muddy water. How do you, how do you adjust to that? And so I'm going to talk about some general rules of thumb that you can use to adjust to those conditions out there on the river so you can keep catching fish. So, first thing in spring, we've got to find the fish. And obviously we found at least one that day, right? So basically we've got to find the fish that are in pre-spawn. And here's how I approach that. First, I look for a spawning area, okay? So I want a major spawning area. In your head right now, think about your river uh, and think about those spawning areas that you know of historically bring a lot of bass. So I'm talking about a major spawning hub, okay? And so you can see I've got mine marked over there on the map. That big, it's actually a huge notch out, and I'm not real good at drawing, so it's proportionally a little bit off. But anyway, that's, that's a little notch out right there, okay? So I'm looking for that, that spawning area. Then the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look for a wintering pool. How many of you guys, do you guys know what wintering pools are, what they look like? Okay, so basically what happens in a, in a, uh, a river system during the winter time is that the smallmouth will gravitate to certain types of pools. And the best way I can tell you how to identify a wintering pool, it's a pool of water that's fairly deep, usually six to ten feet deep on the rivers I fish. Every river is different, it's all kind of relative, right? Um, but the slow moving water, but the trick here is, it's got to provide current protection at all levels, right? So when that water starts pumping in the spring, if there's no place for those bass to go and that, that hole is blown out, that's not going to be a, what I call a grade A wearing pool, right? It's going to be like a grade B or C, okay? If there's a notch out along the bank where those fish can slide up into that notch out, when the water gets high and there's a big eddy in there, they're going to be in that pool and it's going to hold a lot of fish, a lot of fish. So what I try to do is I try to find that, that um, spawning area. Then I try to identify what I would say is a major wearing pool. I mean, we've got wearing pools on the Susquehanna and Juniata where I know there's hundreds of fish in there in the wintertime. I know it. I know there's hundreds of fish. And so then I kind of try to figure out what the path is going to be, what the migration path is going to be from those wintering pools to that spawning area. It's kind of like hunting deer, right? You know, the bedding area, the feeding area, and you've got to know where that big buck's going to go through there because they've got a favorite route, right? And they'll adjust sometimes, but they've got kind of that route that they like. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to hunt these big fish. So basically, here's kind of the big, the big kind of picture thing or the thing that I look for here. Basically, I'm looking for major current breaks, major current breaks, okay? I'm looking for what I call feeding stations. Those major current breaks form feeding stations. And so if we look at my example over here, and this is a real example that I fish, okay? And what you're going to do, if you're a boat fisherman, what you want to do is you want to find, like I'm a kayak fisherman, so I've got limited access to move around sometimes. I might find three, four spots, five spots like this 
on a five mile stretch and those are, those are the spots I'm going to focus on because I'm going to cut out water real quick, okay? So basically I'm looking for major feeding stations or major car breaks from the wearing pool, which is down here in this case, right? Between the wearing pool and between the spawning area. And those fish are going to migrate up through here, okay? So basically if I look at this example, I've got ledges. So there's a ledge here. This is a real live example. I've got a major, uh, or a, what I call a minor ledge, it comes just short of being on top of the water. So I like them better when they come up to the surface of the water, but this one's just short. And there's, it's got a real calm pocket of water behind it. And it's deep, six to eight feet. And that's the key. Because what it is with this pre-spawn smallmouth bass in rivers, what are they doing? They're coming out of their winter time slumber, right? And they're starting to activate Mother Nature says feed, feed, feed. But they're still pretty weak. And so they like to stay in calm water, but then slide out here. They're not going to slide out into the current. They're going to slide out here to that billowy water sometimes or stay just inside in the calm water, okay? And they're going to wait for food to come to them. That's, a feed, that's why I call it a feeding station. But they like deep water, though. They don't like the stuff that's like three, two foot deep. You're not going to find a good water, you know, pre-spawn fish behind a border the size of a basketball like you can in the summertime, right? You, you've got to have these big, major, uh, major kind of current breaks. So this is one current break here that's pretty darn good. Over here, there's actually, in this uh, piece of river, it's actually a, a, a cliff. And there's rock, chunk rock that's falling down in there. And it's not actually visible. We found this through uh, using electronics and so forth. There's a pile of rock down there. And again, there's a really calm pocket right behind that rock. There's about six, there's six feet of water there. And that's another place where there's pre-spawn fish are going to pull up there and hold up. The next place we're looking at is bridge pilots. This, this water is loaded with good spots. Uh, between the wearing pool and the, and the spawning pool. So we look at bridge pilings, and you can see here, six feet, six feet, three feet, three feet. My money's on these ones, okay? My money's on these ones because it's deep water, really calm water, it's a good feeding station, it's where they have access to the current, okay? So we got another set of bridge pilings down here, about four feet, that's okay. The cool thing we have here, <clears throat> that I have on kind of my, my little list here of things to look for, is a little, what I call a carve out. You ever see a river where the current scoops out the gravel and stuff? It makes almost like a bowl. It's like a pool in there. And, and it's just the way the current moves through there. And right here, there's a carve out. What's happening, actually, I, I think what's happening, okay? There's a, I think there's a ledge. This is three foot of water right here. There's like some kind of ledge, and that water's banging against that ledge, and it can't, can't move the ledge, right? And it's just carving out stuff in front. Okay, so it's carving out the gravel, carving out the chunk rock, and actually you can tell the current actually deflects out into the middle of the river here, really strong. But in here, there's an eight foot bowl, and it's pretty calm. And there's pre-spawn fish like that. So they're looking for deep water, they're looking for calm water, they're looking for stuff where they've got really easy access to, to, to the currents they can feed, but they're not gonna go out in the current. They're just not gonna go out in the current. So what I typically do is my strategy here I start the closest to the spawning area, okay? Now, you know, I've heard a lot of guys that fish for pre-spawn fish in the lakes and stuff like that. They start deep and start to move up shallow. Um, here's what I do in the river. Now, number one, I talked about the, the, the wearing pool, right? So when we're fishing the wearing pool, usually we're catching the fish in the middle of the deadest, calmest water in that pool a lot of times. What starts to happen towards the end, this time of year, right now it's happening, they, they start to increase their feeding, the pace of their feeding, right? Like my buddy just sent me some pictures. It's a guy. He's like, man, they're starting to feed now. They're still in the wearing pools, but what they're also doing, you'll notice, is they're moving to the top of the wearing pool and the bottom of the wearing pool because they're getting ready to disperse. That's your clue. So a lot of guys say, what's the water temperature that all this happens at? And I say, let the fish tell you when it's going to happen. Fish those wearing pools, see what's going on there. And if they're starting to move to the top and the bottom, and you know, like, we're, we're fishing for 5, 10 bites in the wintertime, and all of a sudden you're getting 5, 10 bites an hour, and those fish are at the top and bottom, that's your time to think, man, those fish, I think some of those fish are going to make a break. And here's what the research tells us about the, the big, big spawning females. The first females, the biggest females are going first usually, right? So that's why, in my mind, I'm fishing for the big fish. I want those big fat fish like you see on my pictures there, right? So I'm going up here by the spawning area first. I'm working my way backwards. I'm not going to start down here by the wearing pools and work my way up. I want to hit those biggest fish first. So I'm going to start on this ledge right here. I'm not going to talk about presentations, okay? I'll talk about that in a couple minutes. But I'm going to start here with my lower presentations and start fishing here. If I don't catch anything, I'll go here. Go here, 
just keep backing off until I start hitting fish. So sometimes I'll hit, hit some fish here, hit a couple fish here on this, this pile and this pile. You know, I might hit one or two here. What I'll do then is once I kind of locate some fish, a lot of times one spot will be stronger than the other. Okay, I'll just start making a little run here in a circle on those spots then. I'm just going in a circle. So if the bite slows down here, I go here fish for a little bit. If the bite slows down here and I caught a couple of fish, I'll go here for a little bit. And I'll just keep making a circle. Now again, if you're in a jet boat, man, you've got like four of these spots pegged. You're golden. You're golden if you've got four of these spots pegged down like this. Um, but what happens though is sometimes, you know, I make, I make the loop, but what happens though is sometimes things happen with the weather in the spring, right? This is when the guys get really frustrated and everybody throws up their arms. A lot of guys just stay home. When it's high, muddy, and cold, man, if they stay home. And I'll tell you a story. Basically, I was in here fishing on this ledge with some of my, my guide clients, and we were pegging our boats over here, fishing into this ledge. And I mean, you could do no wrong. Three pounders, three and a half pounders. I mean, almost every single cast. And there was a lot of spawning females in there, just ready to run up on there. Already, the males were up here. I never fish up here, and I'll tell you why. The males are up here, the buck bass. They're little 12 inches. You know, they're up there just messing around. The females will move in, and they'll move back in here. So this is even going to be a good post-spawn spot, too. This is a revolving door. That's a revolving door right here, this ledge, okay? So we're here fishing, and, like, we go home. We stop for a beer, you know, we go to the hotel. Oh, yeah, this is going to be great tomorrow. We're just going to get right in there and catch those fish. Guess what happened? We knew it was going to rain. We didn't know how bad it was going to be. The town, air temperatures went down. The cold rain came down hard, and the river went from this nice, green, beautiful, you know, kind of almost clear kind of color to the chocolate milk color, and the water got a foot or two higher. Okay, so, bam, you know, obviously we're going to go back, though. I'm going to go back to where I was catching fish, right? So I go back there, we go back, and we fish for like an hour, nothing. And I mean, we threw everything but the kitchen sink out, nothing. Okay, so we're fishing and fishing, and then what we did is we fall back. When, when conditions degrade, we fall back. We start to fall back. Sometimes the fish will fall back. And so basically, what we did is started coming here. We actually caught a couple here, okay? Nothing here in the shallow stuff at all. Uh, moved here, got one fish here. I, it's amazing I can remember this stuff. Caught one fish here. And then we came over here and got up on this, this ledge, and we're fishing this eight-foot pool. And guess where those fish were? Whammo, right there again, gold. <clears throat> Now we changed our tactics, which I'll talk about in a minute. We had to change our presentations up. But we found those fish again, and then we just changed up our presentation to match what the fish wanted. Okay, so basically that's what you do. You fall back. What really happened here, I, 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 I kind of know what happened here. The water got really high. Instead of really calm behind here, it got really billowy. There was still good current break, but it just, you remember how I told you they liked that dead water, the pre-spawners? It just got real billowy, and, and they just had to work too hard. And they're, you know, they're, Mother Nature says you gotta feed up, you gotta rest, you gotta get to that bed, you know, make some eggs. And uh, so they started falling back to a place where they were comfortable. Okay, and so we just kind of followed the followed the different current breaks until we found that current break that, that, that was perfect for them, where they, those fish fell back to. Um, so that's how you find 